Good morning and greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your phone calls, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business, truth products, truth treatment products, or our formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, or if you have a health challenge that you or a loved one wants help dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your calls. We want to hear from you. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, likewise, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase longevity products or start a longevity business, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to work out of your home, right off your, right off your home office or mileage or stamps, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business while you make money out of your home, while you make your own hours, while you help change the world with the power of nutritional supplementation, Call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We can help you build your business. I can come out and, and do talks. I'm actually going to be in the Sacramento area this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you are in uh, Northern California or Sacramento, I'll be uh, in Roseville uh, on Friday the 26th. I'll be in Roseville on Sunday the 28th, and I'll be in Granite Bay. I guess these are all in the Sacra- Sacramento area, Granite Bay and Loomis, California, on Saturday the 27th. Call Jay, Ingle- Jay Ingles at 916-712-9504 for more info. That's 916 916- 712-9504 for more information. Hope to see you there. If you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel if you're dealing with dark spots or aging. Got to use our retinol 5% gel carefully, though. It kicks butt. It, it has got a bunch of retinol in there. It's nowhere near as irritating or as aggressive as prescription retin-A, of course, but uh, it still is a pretty powerful product. I designed it to be have the same potency as Retin-A, 0.05%, but of course you don't get preservatives and the, fra- uh, the propylene glycol and the sodium lauryl sulfate and all the other crap they put in that Retin-A. Instead, you get a big old dose of vitamin C with your Retinol 5% gel, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, and any of our Truth Treatment products. They're all available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. Got lines open for you at 
6010. We're talking about melatonin and serotonin, all as it relates to the pineal gland. I also want to talk about another hormone, which is super duper important. And I know it's one that almost everybody who's, li who's listening to this program has heard of, although there's a lot of misunderstandings around this hormone. We will clear that up. And it is the hormone cortisol. Most people will tell you that cortisol is stress hormone or stress management hormone. But it's not necessarily a bad guy. Cortisol is not necessarily a bad. Uh, cortisol is not necessarily an evil hormone that we hear it is. It's very. It's the hormone of life. I actually got a, a letter from a doctor a couple days ago. It was posted on a YouTube that I did, um, and she she actually was very, very kind of mean, mean lady. She said, how dare this guy talk about cortisol so negatively? Cortisol is the hormone of life. And of course, it is the hormone of life, and all hormones are functional and important. The problem with cortisol is when it gets secreted in, two, in, in chronically, at, at chronically high levels. Cortisol, which is really a feel-good hormone, does get a bad rap. I understand this. It's actually an energizing biochemical. And under conditions of deficiency of cortisol, we don't feel so good. The problem with cortisol is when it's chronically secreted at high levels. Chronic long-term exposure to cortisol, stress hormone, is a big problem. Yes, it's the hormone of life. Yes, it's an energizing hormone. Yes, it's a feel-good hormone. Yes, it's very important, as all hormones are. There's no evil hormones in the body. There's no bad hormones in the body. Hormones are very, very functional. Hormones are, are like little switches that turn on the cell's ability to do something. Cells have little plugs on the outside, little openings on the outside. I like to think of them as sockets, not plugs, but sockets. And hormones act like plugs that sit in the socket. A hormone can be thought of just like an electrical plug sits in the socket, i.e. the receptor. That is what the, the, the uh, receptor is, like a socket on the outside of a, of a cell. And cortisol acts like a plug, like all hormones act like a plug, sits in the socket, and you get a biological effect. That's how hormones work. They're all important. The problem is with long-term out-of-balance secretion, chronic exposure to cortisol, that's where we run into problems because cortisol is part of the body's stress response system, and the body should only be in stress or has stress response system should only be triggered occasionally. Cortisol levels fluctuate and are dependent on the time of, of day. Typically, they're associated with a day-night cycle, a circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is the day-night cycle. We secrete different things at different times of the day. Cortisol levels are supposed to be high in the morning. It's like a natural coffee. It's our own body's coffee. I think that uh, uh, caffeine and cortisol are very similar, and I personally think, at least their, their biological responses are very similar. And I personally think that our national or international addiction to coffee, as well as tea and Mountain Dew and Coca-Cola and other stimulants, legal stimulants, as well as illegal stimulants, may have something to do with the fact that our body has just gotten so used to cortisol, it takes more and more and more of a cortisol-like effect to amp us up. That's called cortisol resistance, and it can occur when we're chronically exposed to cortisol because we're chronically exposed to stress. Also, in addition to chronic exposure to cortisol, deficiencies in cortisol from chronic exposure to cortisol can also cause a, uh, a problem responding to cortisol appropriately and force us into doing coffee every day and Mountain Dew in the middle of the day and uh, <laughs> other stimulants. We basically are resistant to cortisol, dealing with the, the signs of cortisol resistance as well as the signs of cortisol deficient, deficiencies. Ordinarily, cortisol levels go up, they peak somewhere around 8 in the morning. They start to go up maybe f like 4 or 5 in the morning. It's so cool how the body works. It, we naturally secrete a wake-up hormone. We naturally secrete natural caffeine, i.e. cortisol. Around 4 or 5 a.m., it peaks around 8 a.m., and then gradually drops throughout the day until it reaches its lowest level again around 3 or 4 in the morning. And then it starts to go up again. That's what's supposed to happen. When we hear about the negative health aspects associated with cortisol, it usually has to do with this circadian rhythm being thrown off. Instead of cortisol going up in the morning and then gradually going down until it, it drops to its lowest levels at three or at around 3 o'clock in the morning, what ends up happening is cortisol levels don't go down. They just stay up. And that's where we run into a problem. Why do they stay up? 
because of our messed up 21st century, amped up, stressful lifestyle. And it's not just psychological stresses. This is really important. When we think of stress, we hear the word stress. We think of psychological stress, but physiologic stress is important too. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com, as well as BrightSideBen.com. Both sites have a search engine that you can uh, search specific topics, review topics, if you want to direct a customer, client, patient, friend, family, loved one to specific topics about specific health challenges. Got six years or so of archives up at BrightSideBen.com and BenFuchsArchive.com. And BenFuchsArchives.com, both of those. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting those up for us. Got multiple websites at Ben Fuchs Archive and BenFuchsArchives.com. It's a compilation of all my websites, and Peter generously uh, put to, uh, spent some time and probably some money putting those together. Thank you again, Peter. Also, PharmacistBen.com, BrightSideBen.com, and criticalhealthnews.com have all the longevity products as well as a join the team now link that you can click on if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. I'll be in uh, Sacramento on Friday and Saturday of this week helping my friend Jay Ingalls build his business and Melissa Galladay build her business. Friday, January 26th, Saturday, Saturday the 27th, and Sunday the 28th. Call Jay at 916-712-9504 for more information. 916-712-9504. Our number today, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about cortisol, melatonin, the pineal gland, health challenges, whatever they may be common or success story. If you have questions about our Truth Treatment products, which are available at truthtreatments.com, I did a series of videos with Brianna Stanko Stanko, uh, uh, on her website. Uh, Her website is premierlook.com. She's got all kinds of skin health products, on uh, skincare products that she sells. I did a series of videos with her. If you Google Brianna Stanko and Pharmacist Ben or Ben Fuchs, you'll get some of these videos all about skin. We don't talk, well, we talk a little bit about skin on this program. I, I actually wanted to do a program that was just about skin, but I didn't think that was going to, I didn't think there was enough information there to make it an entertaining program, but I've been, stu- I've been studying skin and working with skin now since 1983. That is a long time, folks. And in, in that time, I have formulated thousands of products. I sold millions of dollars of skincare products and helped m- countless people with their skin, with aging skin, with dark spots, with eczema skin, eczematous skin, skin, acneic skin, wounded skin. And I learned a lot about skincare. One of the major things I learned about skincare is that. W- Possibly the most important thing I learned about topical skincare in 35 years is there's only two ingredients that are actually going to make a, well, let's say three ingredients that are going to make a significant difference on your skin. Two main ones, that is vitamin A and vitamin C, and then also some kind of stimulating ingredient like an alpha hydroxy acid, glycolic acid or lactic acid. That's pretty much it, folks. The skincare business is scammery for the most part because bookkeepers and marketers and bankers see little dollar signs because they can sell water for a lot of money. Go look at your ingredient deck. It's one of the most important things to understand about skin. Skin care products is the ingredient deck. That's, we should all be ingredient deck readers, not just with our skin care, by the way, but with foods, too. Always, we always want to, if we're interacting with a substance that's getting into or onto our bodies, we want to know, we should want to know what's in it. If you look at your ingredient deck on most skin health products, you're going to see... <laughs> The first ingredient is aqua, water, but sometimes they'll put it in French or Spanish because they think it sounds better. Aqua. That's why bookkeepers and bankers and marketers love the skincare business because they can sell you water for a lot of money. It's not fair. It's dirty pool, dirty business. Look for retinol, look for vitamin C in its fat-soluble form, and then periodically use a good glycolic or lactic acid solution. We're going to spend more and more time talking about skin health and skin care and topical uh, ways you can topically address the skin. But for now, I want to talk about cortisol, 
which is also, by the way, uh, an important skin substance. Has You can tell, you can read the cortisol levels if you understand how the body works by looking at the skin. There's a lot of, there's a lot of effects. Cortisol has a lot of effects on the skin. Thinning skin, for example, is a classic sign of excessive cortisol. As we get older, for the most part, in our culture today, we are secreting or we are exposed to too much cortisol. That's just a basic rule of thumb. Not for everybody, probably, if you're meditating, which is a great way to lower your cortisol. If you're paying attention to your breathing, if you're paying attention to your body symptoms, if you're monitoring or, or staying away from sugar, keeping your blood sugar under control, the chances are you're going to be good with your cortisol. Cortisol is stress hormone, but it's not only about psychological stress. When we hear the word stress, almost immediately we think of psychological or emotional stresses and mental stresses, which is obviously a factor. I'm not, I'm not minimizing that, but there's also physiologic stress. Eating the wrong foods will spike your cortisol. Chronically eating the wrong foods will chronically spike your cortisol. If you have long-term digestive health challenges, that will spike your cortisol. If you're eating lots of sugar and your body is dealing with the effects of high blood sugar and low blood sugar for that matter, you will again be dealing with exposure, excessive exposure to cortisol. If you're not breathing properly, again, you will be exposed to too much cortisol. If you have an autoimmune disease, an inflammatory disease, chances are also good you'll be dealing with too much cortisol. If you have a long-term inflammatory disease or autoimmune disease, you may have suppression of cortisol. And if you're taking drugs, if you're taking prednisone, you're going to be exposed to too much cortisol especially if you're on prednisone long-term. A lot of folks are taking prednisone for life. They're just on it long-term. So it's important to remember that there's physiologic, physical uh, reasons why we can be exposed to too much cortisol. Cortisol levels are supposed to drop during the day and then drop down to, uh, at night, and they're supposed to drop after stress. But if you have long-term stress, they're not going to drop. We live in a 24-hour stress-filled culture, 24-7 stress-filled culture. Not only uh, physiologic stress, but inflammatory stresses, digestive stresses, blood sugar stresses. And this is where we run into cortisol problems. And by the way, too much cortisol and cortisol resistance, kind of it's the same as not enough cortisol. So there's overlap between too much cortisol, which can lead to resistance, and, and deep uh, uh, depletions in cortisol. So the body not responding to cortisol is just as bad as depletions in cortisol. And when we talk about adrenal fatigue, which I'm sure most of you heard of, we've talked about that before, when we talk about adrenal fatigue, what we're really talking about are cortisol issues, which by the way is related to a poorly functioning thyroid. It's all one package, folks. Adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, and the ups and downs, deficiencies and excesses, and resistance to cortisol. Cortisol, adrenal fatigue, thyroid, this is the third point on our triangle of disease. It's the jumping off point to every other health challenge. And you can think of it as one big package. Cortisol resistance, def depletion of cortisol, adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, it's one big package. That, there's actually diseases, official diseases, which aren't, you know, when we think about a disease, these are just names of various c symptoms and various things that go wrong in the body. So I'm not really big on diseases, but there are a couple of disease names. They're, they're basically just names. There's a couple of disease names that are related to cortisol, cortisol issues. One is called Addison's disease. Addison's disease is a, is a uh, disease marked by deficiencies in cortisol. So uh, symptoms include things like weight loss, uh, weight loss or failure to gain weight. Problems gaining weight, chronic fatigue, weakness, melasma, darkening on the skin, low blood pressure, diarrhea, chronic diarrhea. All these can be related to Addison's disease, so-called Addison's disease, but really it's just cortisol resistance or, or deficiencies in cortisol. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. On the bright side, Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com and uh, I always say that, benfuchsarchives.com and benfuchsarchive.com and brightsideben.com. 
com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here momentarily. We do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here just after a couple interesting stories. There's been a couple of, in the last month or so, uh, last couple months, there's been some real interesting buzz around blood pressure medication and cancer, especially something called HC. TZ, also known as hydrochlorothiazide, which is really considered to be one of the most benign of the antihypertensive drugs. By the way, antihypertension, high blood pressure, is a classic sign of exposure to cortisol, of long-term exposure to cortisol. If you if you don't have a blood pressure cuff, you might want to consider you might want to consider getting one of those digital blood pressure cuffs at home. It's a great way to monitor what's going on in your body. You can also monitor how well your uh, your non-medical health protocol is going because your blood pressure will typically reflect excessive stress in the body and excessive stress is uh, associated with health challenges. When blood pressure drops, not you know, you don't want low blood pressure, but when blood pressure drops to its normal n- normal uh, uh, numbers, some like I don't know, probably 80 or so on the low end, maybe 110, 100-ish on the high end, you can go up to 90 over 120, I suppose, somewhere in there. If you're if you're like if you're into the hundreds on your lower end, and you're at 140 or 150 or 160 on the high end, you got a problem. You'll notice that when you're under long-term stress from say uh, digestive problems or blood sugar problems, you'll notice that your blood pressure will run consistently high. If you go out drinking next morning, your blood pressure may be high because uh, alcohol can put a burden on the adrenal glands and cause secretion of cortisol, especially if you're not used to going out and drinking a lot. So keeping a blood pressure cuff at home can be a nice way to monitor what's going on inside your body. Essential hypertension affects 80 million Americans. Essential meaning we don't know what causes it. At least the medical model does not know what causes it. So that's just essential. It's just part of your nature. It's just who you are. That's what essential means. It's when something's just who you are, part of your nature. They call it essential hypertension. I'm telling you, there is a reason for essential hypertension, and there is a reason why 80 million Americans have high blood pressure, even though there's no known reason for it, because they're under long-term duress. They're under long-term stress. So taking a diuretic is not an answer. What's the logic behind taking a diuretic? Well, you take a diuretic, you lose water. You lose water, your blood volume drops, and the pressure will thus drop along with it. But you're not supposed to mess around. You're not supposed to monkey around with the blood system, the cardiovascular system, and there's always going to be toxicity, even with the supposedly mild and benign and, and first, first, uh, the first line of therapy, they call it, for high blood pressure drugs, the, the diuretics, HCTZ, hydrochlorothiazide, being the classic diuretic. Problem is, HCDZ, TZ, is not all that benign. One of the major things it does is it makes you lose your minerals, especially potassium, also magnesium. It could throw off calcium balance. Actually, if you make calcium, create too much calcium in the blood. How do you like that? Potassium and magnesium are two of the most important blood pressure. This is, this is the ultimate example of the stupidity of the pharmacomedical model. Potassium, there's a lot of examples, but this is the ultimate or an iconic example. Potassium and magnesium are two blood, two minerals that are associated with low blood pressure, with lowering blood pressure, with normalizing blood pressure. They give you a drug for high blood pressure that causes you to lose these two natural minerals that are important for lowering your, your blood pressure. I have an idea. Why don't we make sure people get magnesium and potassium, which are two very common nutritional deficiencies, especially magnesium. Oh, this is, this is another juicy tidbit from the pharmacomedical model. So the doctors will say, well, we know that that HCTZ, we know that that hydrochlorothiazide makes you lose your potassium. So now we got a solution. We're going to give you another drug that helps you hold on to your potassium. Yes, they'll give you other drugs to make sure you don't lose too much potassium to take care of the potassium loss that you took from the first drug. This is the stupidity in a nutshell of the pharmacomedical model and why I have made it my personal mission as a pharmacist to expose this nonsense and stupidity and you could say evil. 
It's just not right and it's not fair. If you have high blood pressure, relax, lighten up, lower your cortisol, take nutritional supplements, reduce your sugar, take care and address any inflammatory health issues, digestive health issues. There's so many ways that we can naturally and from the comfort of our own homes and healthfully lower our cortisol levels, reduce our cortisol and reduce our lower our blood pressure and really get healthy and increase our longevity without prescription drugs and certainly without the medical model. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Mark. Mark in Texas. Good morning, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. Welcome to the Bright Side. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, hey, I work with a 63-year-old lady, and she uh, went to the doctor for a bone density test. And, and they wanted her, to put her on uh, Boniva. Tell me they wanted to put her on one of those drugs. Forteo is an injectable. Hey. Uh, she doesn't like that. Uh, she didn't want to be on lady. Boniva or you, you never want to take those drugs. I can think of no reason to ever take those drugs. They do not help you build bone. Let me very, be very clear about that. They do not help you build bone, period. What they do is they stop your bones from breaking down, or at least they, uh, they, they poison the bone breakdown system. See, bone is constantly remodeled. In fact, the whole body is constantly remodeled, but the bo bone especially is remodeled. Remodeling means out with the old, in with the new. The body is constantly in this turnover process of breaking down old tissue, uh, breaking down old bone tissue and building it up again. This assures that the bones will constantly be strong, will be strong and new and fresh. This is so cool how the bone system works. It's unbelievable. We look at the bone and we think of it like it's just bones, like chicken bones or like a skeleton bones. It's just solid, like a, like, a, like a piece of concrete or something. It's not. It's living tissue. It's alive. And it is constantly turning itself over. And for good reason. It's to assure that we always have strong bone. There are cells that are part of the clear up, clean up crew that clean up the old bone. There are cells that are part of the build up crew that build new bone. They call them osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Don't have to worry about those names. Just think clean up bones and, and uh, new, bone, new bone building cells, clean up cells and new bone building cells. Right? Make sense so far? Yeah. yeah. The Forteo kills, poisons the cleanup crew. So you have constantly have bone, but it's weak bone. It's old bone. It's bone that's more prone to cracking, more brittle bone. More bones is more prone to fracturing. It doesn't build bone. Building bone is part of being healthy. It's not special. It's part of being healthy. When we get old, the accumulation of toxicity, especially long-term exposure to cortisol, thins the bones. That's one of cortisol's important side effects or important effects is it thins the bone. It thins the body. It thins the skin. Hang on. Don't go away, Mark. All right? I want to finish up here when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Side pharmacist Ben here. It's got lines open 844-236-6010. We're talking to Mark in Texas about bone building uh, and weakening bones. This is a classic sign, a, a classic um, manifestation of the aging response. We thin, we shrivel. That's part of the bone is part of the body called connective tissue. The connective tissue is about 30% of the body, and a large part of that 30% is bone. The bone remodels, it rebuilds itself. The key to building bone is, and, and building all connective tissue is it comes from two directions. It's not complicated. It's exactly the same thing we talk about on this program every single day. Out with the old, uh, uh, to keep the bad stuff out and put the good stuff in. I, everybody always tells me, not everybody, but I hear a lot of times I'm talk, I talk too complicated and it's too much technic, technical stuff. So here's health simplified, bone building simplified. Good stuff in, bad stuff out. Okay? Bad stuff is sugar primarily, and that means bread and pot, or largely uh, bread and pasta and rice, potatoes, all the, the foods that spike our blood sugar, desserts, fruit juices, soda pop. All the foods that spike your blood sugar will thin your bones. So she's got to go on a ketogenic diet or low-carb diet, something low-carb. Okay, you with me? Yes. 
see your family. Okay. Okay. Secondly, protein. Bone is made up of protein and minerals together. The protein you want is bone broth protein. Also whey protein and egg protein. Building proteins. Meat and fish protein. Meat's just problematic these days. Fish is probably problematic too. But they are building proteins. Okay? Even dairies okay. are building protein, theoretically. Not processed dairy, not pasteurized dairy. And by dairy, I'm talking basically milk, raw milk. Once you make cheese, that is not good food. Cheese is not a good food. We have a cheese. The longevity has a cheese that is better, probably, but I'm not a fan of cheese. Although a little bit is kind of tasty, I will admit. So, so, uh, and you know what? You know what? Cheese addiction and cheese, uh, cheese uh, excess, uh, our excess ingestion of cheese is related to two major things: fat and salt. If you eat enough fat and you eat enough salt, you're not going to want cheese. And you can test this yourself. Go get a bunch of fat whether it's coconut oil or something like Udo's blend, like a liquid fat, and do a bunch of it, all right? And then do a bunch of salt, or at least some, some salt water, and see if cheese tastes good to you. It will guaranteed not taste good to you. You won't want cheese. Now, I'm not saying that that's something you want to do all the time, eat a bunch of fat, and uh, you know you do need some salt, but you don't want to overdo these things. But when we get enough fat and we get enough salt, we're not going to want our cheese. So cheese is not a great food. It's not a great bone food. Uh, so protein, bone broth protein, chicken broth itself, uh, high uh, things that help the body make protein like hyaluronic acid can be helpful. Minerals like silica, liquid silica gel is a great supplement. Zinc, very important for bone building, also sugar metabolism. Um, exercise is very important. Some, some kind of stress on the bones. The bones grow when they're under stress. We're going to talk about how stress is important tomorrow. Stress helps us build. Stress Stress, you know, exercise is one of the best ways to build bone. Um, all of the things I just, magnesium is important for the bones. Certainly calcium, potassium can be important for the bones. All of these things are for building the bone manufacturing engine. But there's a key to that engine. You can have the best engine in the world. You can have a Ferrari engine, right? But if you don't have a key, it doesn't matter. That engine ain't going nowhere. You're not going to go anywhere, right? You need a key. Right. The key to bone building is something that is very, very misunderstood and underappreciated. It is the primal panacea, and that is vitamin C. That is the key that turns on the ignition of the bone-building machinery. And many people are deficient in vitamin C, or at least not getting enough vitamin C to uh, be maximally healthy, even if they don't have scurvy. So make sure she's getting enough vitamin C as well. There's tons well, more, but that's a, none of them involve drugs. Yes, go ahead. Okay, well, I told her the line I was tall in there was for that foundation. Yeah. Uh, there was cardio C. I, I told her she needed to get on that. And I was also thinking about uh, Beyond Osteo FX. I didn't uh, know, Beyond uh, Osteo FX is great, but I would do the Healthy Start Pack first. Which uh, you can throw in. Oh, and the glucogel caps, too. I forgot about glucosamine. That's also extremely important for helping okay. build all connective tissue. All right. And you know what the good news Even That's all the good news is that you can do this without doctors. But even better news, when you do all the strategies I just told you about, not only will you really be getting building bone, bone building, unlike the drugs, not only will you not be getting toxicity, unlike the drugs, but you'll also be getting multiple benefits, unlike the drugs. You'll have less wrinkles. You'll have a, a stronger cardiovascular system. You'll be at lower risk for uh, fatty plaques and cholesterol buildup inside the blood vessels. You'll live a longer life. This is a no-brainer, people. This is a no-brainer. It is so. It's just a sign of our hip, hypnotic trance we are in that we think that we should take Forteo rather than focus on all of these non-toxic, longevity-inducing, bone-building strategies. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not being mean here. I'm just saying this is just craziness, absolute craziness. All right, Mark, I got to go. Did I help you? Uh, one, one last question. Uh, uh, Evista, she's on that as well. Is she's on what? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Evista, Evista, E V I S. Well, you know, I mean... These are hormone substances. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, a big believer in any per, of drugs, especially. I, I'm actually, Evist, I believe, is an estrogen. Is that an estrogen? God, don't get me laugh. You don't know what that is. Yeah, I think that's an, that's a, that's one of those new fancy schmancy new estrogen, uh, selective estrogen. They say, you know, they have these new drugs. They're called selective estrogen uh, uh, response modulators. They're selective. They only work on certain types of estrogen. Hogwash. They work on everything in the body, and they're as nasty as any other drug. They can cause lung problems, sore breasts, insomnia, vomiting, all kinds of all kinds of. It's just a drug. Stay away from drugs unless you need them for an, an emergency. All right, Mark, I got to go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go to Seattle, my favorite city, next to 
next to uh, Boulder uh, and talk to Caroline. Good morning, Caroline. Hi, I'm in Seattle. I know. I love it. I love Seattle. Is oh, it I rainy there? I thought you said Boulder. No, no. I said Seattle is my second favorite city oh, okay. next to Boulder. Okay. I absolutely love oh. Seattle. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about cortisol, cortisone. Yes. Is yes. there a difference? One no. natural and the other no. is an injection? Yeah, cortisone is the drug is what they call the drug version, but basically they're the same thing. They're used interchangeably. Hydrocortisone is actually the drug, but they're, they're basically the same thing. Why are you, why well, are you asking? Because I've heard which, they're very bad for you. They, you know, yeah, yeah. Kind of you just keep listening to the bright side. We're going to be we're going to be ripping into cortisol. Now, again, I have to emphasize this: cortisol, like all hormones in the body, are important and functional. It's not like it's just a bad guy. It is a good guy, really. It's the long-term exposure that's the problem. And if you take it by via drug, not only are you going to be ex dealing with long-term exposure, because you're constantly taking it, but you're going to throw off the cycles. Cortisol is cyc cyclic. Cortisol secretion rises and falls. Rises in the morning and then gradually drops to the night and then rises again and drops and rises again and drops. If you take it like a drug, that doesn't happen. You understand what I'm saying, ma'am? Well, I've heard it's just plain bad for you. It can cause all kinds of side effects if you have it injected. Well, yeah, because you're throwing, you're giving yourself stress hormone. You're telling the body it's under stress. Imagine that the cortisol is like a, a, a signal of stress, and you're giving the body constant signals of stress straight through 24-7. That is not supposed to happen, and this makes cortisol one of the most toxic drugs of all. Prednisone, one of the most, and that's what prednisone is, one of the most toxic of all the drugs. So toxic that doctors know, at least they should know, and we learn in pharmacy school, that you never stay on this drug long term. Because it's so toxic, and it can throw off the body's chemistry so uh, so profoundly. So yes, you're okay. absolutely correct. I, okay. I, are they I recommending that you take injections? Um, not me. A friend is taking it for his hip problem. Yeah, because it's but an I anti. Have, yeah. I, I have a frozen. I was just diagnosed with a frozen shoulder, and I wondered what your thoughts were on that. Go get Rolfed. R O L F. Rolfed. Oh they man, have, it hurt to move it. <laughs> What, well, then get, uh, tell, uh, Rolfer will understand that. One of the reasons it hurts is because of what are called adhesions or scar tissue. After, when, you, when you hold your body the wrong way, things start to get all sticky and gunky. It's a protective mechanism. The body protects itself by forming these adhesions and these fibroids. It's very important to break them up. If well, you want to, because you were holding, it could be a lot of things. You could have had an injury, you didn't notice it a long time ago. It could be uh, something like you're holding your body the wrong way and your body is kind of gluing together in, 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 a, in, a, in a position or a fashion that's putting stress on part of the body inappropriately. It could be a combination of all that with nutritional deficiencies. It could be too much sugar. It could be too much cortisol. A lot of reasons why it happens. Uh, get yourself a good book on stretching. Maybe do yoga for injury. Yoga's great stuff, by the way. And then uh, um, also, uh, I would absolutely get some body work, and I love rolfing. Absolute, I'm a huge fan of rolfing. R O L F rolfing, and there's some great rolfers in Seattle. No roll. R O L F. Look it up on uh, online. R O L F rolfing. Gotta go, Caroline. Thank you so much for your call. Sorry if we left you on hold. And that's it for the bright side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. Hope to see in Sacramento. Call J. Ingalls, 916-712-9504. I'll be in, uh, Sacramento, in the Sacramento area this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.